Let's, uh, let's just see this over here. So we have some apparatus, and this is where we're going to burn some graphite, all right, and show that it is made of carbon. So what's bubbling through here is just oxygen. This won't react with our lime water at all. OK, and we're going to see if we can light the graphite and get it burning inside the oxygen. And, ah, there we are. Thank you. That's great. So now we have a hydrogen flame. So this won't produce anything. It's only going to produce water. You can see the water just beginning to condense. Beautiful. I'm going to turn the flame off. Look at that. That's, what do you think? That's brilliant. I think it's it is literally brilliant, <laughs> yes. This is the... Well, I wouldn't mm. call it brilliant, you know. Mm. Just get the uh, the still with the where you see the condensation on that. There's a very oh. brief clip. Oh, um, on the other on the other jar, right there. Oh, on that jar. Oh, I was going to do it on on this jar. Look, we can play it from here. Look. Oh, right. let's play this one. This is when he's burning the diamond, not this. the graphite. Yeah. Go. The moment of truth. Now, can we get? our diamond to burn in the oxygen. You can clearly see uh, condensation on the inside of that flask, can't you? Oh, oh absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of people would say, well, there you go. That, well, there you go. That, that proves that uh, hydrogen and oxygen make water. Oh, right. Water's forming in the inside of that jar because you're burning hydrogen well, in you, with oxygen you're reacting hydrogen with in oxygen to make water make water mm. sure yeah but our view is that the water's within the hydrogen well the water's migrated along with the hydrogen, hydrogen. yeah yeah so that when it's burned the water is released from the hydrogen and condenses, condenses. Uh, as a liquid the, yeah on the sides of the glass walls sure it's similar when you put on your gas cooker yeah, very similar gas when you cooker. put on your gas cooker, yeah. Light the, uh, your gas stove and you just leave it on and then the walls will s soon have condensation. Oh, yeah, it's exactly the same, yeah. Because yeah. you'd get the same even if it had air inside it, wouldn't it? You'd get the same. You'd get the same. Oh, yeah, yeah You'd get yeah. the same effect even yeah. if you had air in, in the, the jar, yeah. Yeah, you know? no, yeah, yeah. Or, or oxygen, but yeah, yeah. absolutely cool. Yeah, so oh, the, the question is, is how much would you get more... This would be the best way to determine. Would you get more whether moisture? Would you get the same amount of moisture whether that uh, diamond is burning in air or in oxygen? Or whether the flame is being burned? Mm -hmm. You don't need to have anything burning there. You can just have the, the fuel being burned. Oh, sorry, yes, that's right. You don't yeah. need the diamond yeah. or the graphite in there. No, what I'm saying... What I'm saying is, would you have more co condensation form if we're saying that the water comes from the hydrogen, which is in with the gas, it's migrated yeah. along with, because of the way the gas is, or the hydrogen is produced, then it doesn't matter whether you're burning it in oxygen or, or air. air. Absolutely, of course, yeah. You're still releasing the same amount of water vapour. Sure, but what air contains water vapour as well, though, doesn't it? Oh, right, yeah, that's the so, point. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a tricky one. Mm. But, you know, I mean, it's, for people to think that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, and this is kind of like a clear proof of that, I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions. Because, 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 because. A lot of people just like hearing other people's views and opinions. Yeah, absolutely, of course. And if you were watching Peter Waters at the beginning there with his burning, allegedly burning his diamond. Thinking the diamond's made of carbon. Or making the diamond glow and the graphite glow. Yeah. And then all this moisture forming on the inside of the jar. There you go. Look, it's water. That must be made of hydrogen and oxygen. You know, and then you hear our views about it. Uh, yeah. You know, you're obviously going to be, um, what's the word? 
a bit pissed off, aren't you, really? Well, there's, so there's two things Listening wrong. Listening to other people's views and opinions. So there's two things wrong with uh, Peter Wother's video. Why really? is there two things wrong His with demonstration. It? Why? In that uh, water's not made of hydrogen oxygen. Oh, of course, yeah. And a diamond and a graphite aren't made of carbon. Oh, mate, absolutely, of course, yeah. You can successfully argue the case, yeah, of course. Because you begin to realise... we all know that it's the salt that turns lime water milky. Well, that's that's our view, you know. It's the salt that turns lime water milky. milky. And a diamond and graphite both contain salt. salt. And that salt is released when it's thermally decomposed. Oh. Or when they are thermally, thermally decomposed. decomposed. Oh. Absolutely, of course. You know, you don't have to... Uh, you know, I, I can't... You know, a lot of these people who, who think their science is true, you know... You know, mainstream science is accurate and true and reflects the real world. You know, they are absolutely deluded. Yeah, I know, yeah. Aren't they? They yeah. are literally deluded. Yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day about uh, stuff, and I'm thinking, how can you say that when th- when it when it when this is the case? Yeah, you know, how can you say? It? It's like somebody said to me the other day. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll agree with you about the moon landings, but I still think the Earth is spinning a ball, you know, it's very I'll agree with you about the moon landings being, being, f- being faked or false. But, you know, with the rest of it, I think it's real. And I'm thinking, what? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> well, why do you think the moon landings were fake? Well, think about it. Not, there's not a lot of principled people in in on the earth, walking the earth no. at the end of the day. That's a lot of they people. got their heads filled up with, with rubbish. Absolutely. Um, the more and more videos we upload, the more and more we are uncovering the fact that a lot of people ha- are have got psychological sure problems, problems. Yeah. even though society may not recognise it, which right. they don't. Society right. tends to think a lot of people are normal. Yeah, like Sci-Fi Dan. Sci-Fi Dan. People like Sci-Fi Dan, who goes out and does, does his job, yeah, comes home and cats thinks, well. thinks the Earth's a spinning ball. Ooh, yeah. These people are normal. According to science, yeah. mainstream science, there's nothing wrong with yeah. them. Whereas us, on the other hand, would say that there's everything wrong with these people. They're delusional. They're delusional. They have yeah. delusional disorders, yeah. which form the basis of psychosis. And, and, and parts of their science is no different to uh, religion. Religion. And so even religious people, we would say, in our opinion, are deluded. They are psychotic. They suffer from psychosis. Yep. Um, you know... Because yeah. they think something to be true that cannot be proved to, to be. be true. A bit like, uh, what's his name? The Archbishop of Canterbury. Absolutely, of course, yeah. But when you think about it logically, why why should anybody think, why should anybody of sound, reasonable mind think something to be true that hasn't been proved to be true? You know, I mean... I, to me, that is just literal madness mm, for yeah. somebody to think something is true when that something hasn't been proved to be true. Mm. You know, oh, to me, it's that. a possibility. It may be, might, it's um, plausible, but it's true. Mm. That's that's going a bit more, you mm. know. Well, to me, that sounds like a, a case of being insecure that sounds like a case of having delusional disorders mm. and psychotic and psychotic yeah. anyway come on anyway, let's get on so we've got some more delusions within science uh, for yeah. everyone this evening and what have we got for everybody precisely well, we, well, then, we're going to just uh, quickly re- recap on uh, peter wother's uh, false understanding of his demonstration in our opinion anyway uh, we've got some uh, more information about um Religion and intellect not um, taken into account when, when we're looking at delusions. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, because society... Now, this is the thing. Because of, because of the way society is constructed, um, it will only recognise certain people to have delusions or to be deluded or to have delusional disorders, you know. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the, we're going to have a look at the gyroscopes on the ISS. Wow, of course. Well, why on well, earth would they put those on that? Gonna have a, are we going to revisit hypergolic fuels? Oh, absolutely. This is brilliant. Hypergolic fuels. Hypergolic absolutely. fuels. We're going to have a look at the Hall effect on with ion thrusters. thrusters. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody left us a comment and asked us to... Uh, gave, gave us their opinion on the International Space Station and uh, gave us a link to... Well, mentioned Hall effect ion thrusters. thrusters. Mm. So we thought we'd do a little bit of research on them because we'd not come across yeah. them. So... Well, that's what we'll cover 
so today, is it? And then we're going to just... Uh, oh, we're going to go over to the Chester University, aren't we? Oh, we're going to go to Chester University. show everyone University. some photographs, because it's been graduation week yeah, well, last in, week. In Chester, anyway. In Chester, of course. And we're going to uh, recap on our CO2. Are we? Are we? Oh, we can have a look at fennel failing. Oh, right, can't yeah. we? We can have a look at fennel failing, of course. Which fennel is failing, because fennel it's failing. all building up to our... Uh, probably next video, which is our, yeah, our next video. Five reasons why we five. don't exhale CO2. Yeah, five reasons why we do not exhale CO2. In our opinion. In our opinion. We'll put the in our opinion in brackets. Oh, dittos, yeah. In, or in dittos or there something, anyway. Or we'll put a little asterisk by the title. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah our little uh, clause. Let's go. Come on. Then. So that's what we've got on for everyone's displeasure. And uh, so what should we do? Should we go back to old Waddy? Yeah. Old Let's Pete. Let's go back to old Pete. Uh, yeah, so we're back on this video. Peter, we, could, we've been, we must have been, how many times have we been on this video? Been on this video Three a few times. times. He's, you know, he's, but a lot of people seem to think that because the diamond and the graphite both disintegrate more or less, mm. or both fully decompose thermally in a jar filled with oxygen and uh, and glowing, allowed to continue to glow after the flame has been removed from a hydrogen a hydrogen flame. A lot of people seem to think, and because the lime water turns milky, a lot of people seem to think that carbon and uh, sorry, graphite and diamond contain carbon. Mm. And because they're burning, well, because they're burning the hydrogen in oxygen, the oxygen is reacting with the carbon to produce carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide. Of course. Now, we've got to mention this straight away. Now, it, it's very clear that when you look at these flasks, you can see that there is thermal decomposition. Now, I would ask everyone out there, I would ask everyone out there, where is the thermal decomposition of uh, anything in our bodies? Oh, well, well, yeah. There isn't there any, isn't is there? there? Of course. Mm. So how can we produce carbon? carbon. We can't. That's, that's, you know, but, but anyway, that's just an aside. Mm. So um, <laughs> but anyway, the, the point we're trying to make in, in this video, and that is the understanding mainstream's understanding of what is actually happening here is in our opinion completely wrong yeah we think you know you can understand you can wrong. interpret what's going on in a different way, way yeah in a totally different way and the, the best thing about it and that is nobody nobody can disprove you absolutely or nobody can <clears throat> falsify your claim absolutely that's the wonderful thing about <clears throat> it so our, our claim that uh, uh, they're not so, producing um, so, um, or, or, or the diamond and the graphite are not made of carbon, and also the hydrogen and oxygen reacting, forming water doesn't make up water. You know, we can we can say uh, uh, our views that are a com in that conflict yeah. those views. Well, what I suggest is we let's go back to the start and just skim me through, skim me through, and turn the volume off and then we'll put forward our view on what's actually happening oh that's a good idea isn't it of course yeah so let's let's have a little look because yeah because yeah pete 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 right at the beginning he says he says let's make some carbon doesn't he oh right yeah and you think well okay right okay but, but, you, thing is how, but you need a carbon source to make carbon and you generally can only do that when you've burn something no no you've got to have partial combustion in order to produce carbon you have to have that carbonization process whereas in this instance how does he know that he's actually undertaking a carbonization process mm -hmm. because he's basically fully thermally decomposing the diamond and the graphite but he's also assuming going on the assumption that the diamond and the graphite are made of carbon. Absolutely, yeah. He's That's just, just the big thing with this demonstration. He's going on the assumption. But anyway, so he sets up the uh, the little thing. He's got the, uh, the... So he's got his lime water. got the oxygen he's bubbling, bu bubbling yeah, through the lime water. He's bubbling oxygen through his lime water. He's got, in this flask, he's got a piece of graphite, which yeah. he says is made of carbon. Well, And we would yeah. say, no, it's a salt. It's made of a salt, black salt. Yeah, we're, so yeah, which it it's contains the salt. So he's got a piece of graphite and he's got hydrogen flame. 
hydrogen it's flame burning is clean. In it's burning with a red flame there. Well, anyway. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's burning, and he switched the flame off because he's got the graphite glowing. Glowing. Because it will continue to and glow the oxygen in, the, in the oxygen. The oxygen um, enables the, the graphite to glow. Yeah, to maintain it. To thermally its... decompose. Sure. Without... A flame from a hydrogen source. Yeah, you don't need you don't need a flame. It will just continue. So, to in our understa- in our understanding, what's actually happening is that the oxygen, the only part the oxygen is playing, oh, yeah. is assisting or making making the thermal decomposition more intense. Well, yeah, that's all it's doing. The oxygen, sure. it's not actually reacting with anything. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, all, I can't really say. Well, all that's happening is that the the graphite is thermally decomposing and the bits of the graphite are going up into going, the going oxygen up. stream and then falling into the lime water. Lime water. And the lime water is turning milky because the graphite is a salt and the yeah. salt is reappearing. Yeah. So really the graphite is just migrating into into lime Excuse water. me. Yeah, you, yeah, you said earlier it's a black salt. But how yeah. can a black salt, um, how can a black salt turn white? There you go. It's a good question. Well, maybe wood, wood maybe turns white. Yeah, but wood. <sighs> but, but it's not black though. It's not a black salt. But you said it was. Okay, maybe not. It's a grey salt. Yeah, I mean, you're only giving your opinions Opinion, here, aren't absolutely. you? Of course. But that you'll never know. No one will ever truly know what's going on in in this reaction. Yeah. Nobody will. All people can do is just come up with some kind of ideas or whatever, mm. yeah. or, or, or or some interpretation of what's going on. But nobody can test it to to know that yeah. it's true. Yeah. So the so, yeah. So basically, in my understanding, what's happening is that the graphite is just thermally decomposing and migrating along with the oxygen. <clears throat> Yeah, along with the oxygen. Along with the oxygen into the lime water. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah the, the spent air, air stream, if you yeah. want to call it and that. And it's coming out in solution in the lime water. Absolutely, yeah. It precipitates out, uh, out of solution in happening. the lime water. Yeah, because course. there's no proof There's no <laughs> proof that the oxygen is actually reacting with the graphite. Yeah. One thing, that, yeah. When we get back to when we get back to the water, when we get back to the water form, you can just imagine inside those those flasks, those chambers, it's very sweaty. Mm, yeah, it's very sweaty because the water's already present. It's in with the in the tank of hydrogen. It's in. It's got to be in with the tank of hydrogen, hydrogen. isn't it? Of course, gaseous water. Gaseous water, absolutely, yeah. of course, because so you can... need water in order to produce your hydrogen yeah. gas. So all that's happening really with the diamond and the graphite. Is that all he's doing, really, in our understanding, is that he's just thermally decomposing them. Absolutely, of course. There's yeah. no reaction, really, taking place. Well, not really. Well, the, yeah, but they say that that is a, a reaction, even thermal decomposition. But I, is I a wouldn't reaction. say it is because the oxygen is only making the thermal decomposition more intense. That's all it's doing. Yeah, well, it's, it's a catalyst, but it, you, you, it may. It's very difficult to know whether it's being used up or not. You'd have to test the gas stream that comes out. Mm. But old Peter Wallace doesn't do this in this oh, demonstration. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody does actually mm. test the gas stream that comes out after bubbling it through yeah. lime water. But we can certainly, we can certain, we can be safe to say that there is a gas stream that's actually coming out. Oh, absolutely. So the oxygen yeah. isn't all being spent. Uh, you'd have to test the gas stream that comes out. You'd have to test the gas stream that comes out. Mm. But um, and we've also got to remember. We've also got to remember that the lime water is only the test for the presence of a salt. (sighs) Yeah, that's your view. Yeah, of course. That's that's, my view. That's yeah. That's that's my view as well. Really, because I can't see how it can be the the test for the presence of a carbon based gas but i would i would say also just finally because yep. i don't want to spend too much time on this absolutely and that's because he's thermally decomposing um substance then the air that's been migrating along through the lime water will be stale 
Yeah, it won't, sure, it won't it'll be, be fresh. It'll be a kind of nitrogenised. Yeah, it's nitrogenised air. We're not saying it's nitrogen. We're just saying it's nitrogenised. Yeah, basically, so it just shows similar properties to nitrogen, which it'll means extinguish a flame. Absolutely, for which means it would extinguish a flame. Yeah, and the final thing to say about this video, and that is, it's also possible that even the oxygen could help sweat and create the dew forming on the inside only because it would push the water because the air contains moisture and in order to make the oxygen you need you need to you need to concentrate the air yeah, so that we're, we're, it's possible that's all i'm saying possible, but i'm not saying i'm right or wrong you and i aren't very um we don't You've got to look at all possibilities. You can't eliminate yeah, one. But what happens to moisture in the air, like when it goes through an oxygen concentrator? Absolutely, yeah, sure. What happens to it? I mean, I, 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 I really don't know. But uh, there you go. So, I mean, there's lots there. Kind of but, you know, to, for people to think that diamonds, water's made, water's made, made of hydrogen, hydrogen oxygen, oxygen, and, and diamond diamonds and graphite, and graphite are made of carbon, you know, no. just on the basis of that demonstration, really, uh, yeah. You know, you, you you need your head testing. You need your head test. You're not being very scientific. Yeah, You've got a great idea, but you need to do some follow up uh, experiments. That's yeah. the trouble. Got it. Which is a hallmark of science. They make claims based upon. Uh, they make a claim. They accept a claim that is merely a hypothesis, mm. and that claim they they think is true. That hypothesis they think is true. Absolutely, because yeah, that's what they do. But so, so that's that one. Uh, what's next then, Peter? You're next. Uh, understanding delusions, religion, and intellect uh, not yeah. taken into account. Oh right, yeah, of course. Yeah. Now we went. Uh, we had Guardian. Uh, we, we had uh, what was her name? Can you remember her name from last week? Tracy. Tracy. Doctor Tracy. Doctor Tracy. Yeah, and and it's um, why religious beliefs isn't a delu. Well, sorry, why religious belief isn't a delusion. In psychological terms, at least. But it can't be, can it? Well, why not? But it should be. No, but, but in, in mainstream's view, it can't be, can it? Religious beliefs are typically incompatible with scientific evidence. Oh, okay. So people and think observable that, reality. And observe. Well, you've got scientific evidence. What? But oh, the, the Earth's a spinning ball. Oh, well, yeah. You yeah. know, it, people think that, you know. Based upon scientific evidence, no, but religious beliefs like the belief. Oh in no, Jesus the scientific Christ. evidence is real. It's just that it's wrong to apply that scientific evidence to the claim the Earth is a spinning ball, for example. Yeah, yeah, but, for example. But, yeah, but religious beliefs like the belief in Moses parting the waves, but aren't considered to be delusions. Religious beliefs, but isn't Why that? Not? Hold on, but let's take that for an example. Yeah. Moses parting the waves. Yeah. Now that is impossible. Impossible, yeah. That is absolutely physically impossible. He, Nobody. He's, it's then more chance part of parting waves. his hair. Nobody Wouldn't can he? part waves of a sea or a stretch of water. Nobody can. Nobody can, yeah. So <clears throat> why are they not considered to be delusional? Absolutely, these these religious people. Uh, so anyway, so there's old Jacob Reese Mogg there getting his, uh, taking yeah. his little tablet. But I think it's a wafer. They could put ice cream in that, couldn't they? Yeah, I know, yeah. Anyway, yeah. but... Anyway. Uh, Written by Dean Burnett here. Yeah, you don't want to read it all. If someone told you, in all seriousness, that they talk to invisible beings who control the universe, you'd probably back away slowly, Woo nodding and smiling. Well, no. If someone told you that the Earth is a spinning ball hurtling through space <sighs> at 66,000 miles an hour, oh, right, yeah. you'd probably back away slowly, nodding and smiling while desperately looking for the nearest exit or escape route. Yeah, if this person then said they wanted to be in charge of your life, you'd probably do the same, but more urgently and with a view to finding the nearest police officer. And yet this happens all the time. So true, isn't it, really? Yeah, no, yeah. Because we've got people in who control society who basically live in, live in a dream world, mm. don't they? Yeah, no, yeah. Um, I don't Arch think we should spend a lot of time on this yeah, article. Sure. Arch, Brexit, uh, Jacob rees blah, 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 blah. But anyway... I've, we've also got this here, understanding delusions, um, abstract. And there's a little bit here. It says a delusion is a belief that is clearly false and that indicates an abnormality in the affected person's content of thought. Mm. 
The false belief, because we look we looked at fixed false beliefs. Okay, a yeah. lot of people have those yeah. fixed false beliefs. However, you can have a a false belief is beyond me though. Yeah. The false belief is not accounted for by the person's cultural or religious background or his or her level of intelligence. Mm. So they because that really ought to be level of intelligence stroke education mm. because then that protects religion and education and culture and culture. cultural background and cultural background mm. from people saying you're deluded yeah, you're yeah. suffering from delusional yeah. disorder yeah no, yeah they, they are protected isn't it strange how man makes up these rules for himself yeah, a person with a delusion isn't yeah. it yeah a person the key feature of a delusion is the degree to which the person is convinced that the belief is true like yeah. the earth is a spinning ball yeah so many people that we've spoken to over the years think that it's true mm. the the earth is a spinning, spinning ball. ball there's yeah. curvature out there yeah. I've um, seen curvature from Concord yeah Wal- Walter's H2O yeah Walter's H2O the, the, air, the air is 21% oxygen yeah, so many people nitrogen. yeah so many people think scientific claims such as those are actually true, true. yeah and yet they're not they can't yeah. be proved to be true at all yeah but, yeah, no, yeah. Well, so we'll go back to we'll go back to here um, but it shouldn't be um, there you go uh, so we'll just go back that's interesting in itself if you step back many people have attempted to pin mental health diagnoses on Donald Trump blah 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 yeah, but, but his more recent claims to be a representative of, of an all powerful invisible deity who created the earth in six days have been dismissed as just cynical pandering does that does that not seem inconsistent? Well, it shouldn't be because they, as they say, you talk to God, you're religious. God talks to you, you're psychotic. Oh, right, yeah, that's a line from the TV show House MD, delivered by the eponymous acerbic medic played by Hugh Laurie. But variations of this comment have been made many times over the years. However, while it is seemingly intended to highlight the double standards inherent in accepting someone's religious views as fine while dismissing similarly unscientific claims as signs of mental disturbance, there is a valid reason for this apparent inconsistency. Well, how can you have a valid reason, reason for an inconsistency? By accepting one, by allowing somebody to be deluded and saying, well, you're okay, you're sane, there's nothing yeah. wrong with you, but, you're, yeah, you're definitely deluded. You, you can't be doing this, can you? Yeah, I know. But this is the way society is built. Um, psychosis is defined as a loss of contact with reality. Now, to me, that's quite, when you think about it, quite a good statement, isn't it? Because a lot of people lost contact are, with have lost contact so, yeah. with, with the real world. Yeah. A lot of people dislike the real world because... I don't know. They're living with living with a partner they don't they don't love. They may have. They're in a crappy job. They're in a crappy job. They don't want to be in. And they're trying to. They're trying to. um, Dream in their lifetime. They they lose contact with the reality in order to cope with being in that job or being in that bad relationship. So they think that aliens are going to come and take them away, Or, or they think everyone likes them at work. Oh, right. yeah, or they think cool. they they think they enjoy the work. Yeah, no, yeah. You know, yeah. people will do, or they think their partner loves them. Yeah, people create well, a non-reality in order to cope with the reality. reality. Yeah, but what's important here is that, and that you, that is essentially psych, psychotic. Yeah, yeah. But, but really, what the main point of all this is? What is what exactly is reality? Well, what is yeah? What is, what reality? is reality? Of course, yeah. But uh, anyway, psychosis but, is defined. But going back to that, what is reality? The Earth can't be a globe and a level plane at the it, same time. It, it can't be both. Yeah, can't it, be both. The real world can't be what you want it to, to be, be. You know, because what the real world is, what the real world is. Mm. You know, mm. we can't we can't decide or determine what it is. Yeah. It is. What anyway, it is. Come on. But anyway, psychosis is defined as a loss of contact with reality and can manifest in numerous ways. It's alarmingly common. Our big I don't really want to spend yeah, a lot know, of time yeah, sure, but I think it's article. quite important. Psychosis typically manifests by people experience hallucinations. No, yeah, and delusions. 
Um, hallucinations we're not interested in. Yeah. Delusions are trickier. It's not about what someone perceives, but what they believe. Oh, there you this go. Is there's, it. there's the word believe. Believe, yeah. The word with the lie in the middle. Absolutely. Delusions have many forms, like grandois. Well, I believe that... Grandiose. War, well, I believe that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Well, that, that, that is a common mainstream view. It's a belief, though. But it's a belief. It's a fixed, false belief. belief yeah. Absolutely, of course. Like uh, like grandiose delusions, where an individual believes they are far more impressive than is the case, yeah, but they're, um, they're, they're, or the more common persecutory delusions. Yeah, we covered these last. Yeah, time. these delusions tend to be very resistant to argument, no matter how blatant. If you're a worldly, blah blah. blah. Uh, there's actually one of the signs of delusional beliefs. That's actually one of the signs of delusional beliefs. They're very resistant to being challenged. We've everyone's spoken to Globies. Yeah. They a lot of them are rigid. They're fixed. Yeah. F- fixed for fixed false beliefs but then that begs the question why do religious beliefs get a free pass yeah why do why, why do they, they get a free pa- pass absolutely i've spoken to people who believe in jesus that he rose from the dead after three days and i'm thinking well how's that possible it's just that's it's just impossible ri- it's impossible people don't do that this is just ridiculous yeah. so how do these people get away with it because they because they create the rules they cre- they need the 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 god the religion to support them being in power oh right yeah which is basically what he's saying in the article about jesus you know had and and his son who died but came back to life two millennia ago is going to return any minute yeah you know but so what gives what is it you know what gives Um, well, delusions are believed to stem from anomalous activity in the brain system for interpreting what does happen and what should happen. The brain essentially maintains a mental model of how the world is meant to work and what things are meant to happen and when. Beliefs, experiences, expectations, assumptions, calculations, all are combined into a constantly updated general understanding of how things happen. So we know what to expect and how to react without having to figure everything out from scratch each time. Luckily, the brain is usually quite good at filtering out relevant, irrelevant information and occurrences, blah, 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 blah. Delusions are what happens when, due to illness or other disruption, like a, 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 um, oh, a, a life... Changing event. A, st- a stressful life event. Yeah. A crisis. Crisis. An emotional crisis. Um, when your world falls apart. Emotional crisis. You may not know your father. You may not know your mother. You know, or you, you you're, split up. You lose your job. You, you, or your parents die, one of your parents die when you're young. Bereavement. Bereavement. A lot of people are bereaving. They're mourning. Mm. A lot of people are in mourning, aren't yeah. they, all the anyway, time? come on. But anyway, those are the types of experiences that make us, that disrupt our uh, our sense of well-being. Uh, this Ooh. delicate system fails, and things we perceive that would usually be dismissed as innocuous or irrelevant end up being processed as far more significant, and our belief system alters to accommodate it, however wrongly. Mm. But the thing is, our brains don't come with an understanding of the complex science of how the world works already pre-installed, like Windows 10 on your laptop. Does. But it does. Oh, absolutely cool. No, it does come pre-installed, because you're, you're, you're living in the real world. Sure. He's still not answering the question, though, is he? That's why delusions are are only diagnosed if they're not consistent with the person's existing belief system and views. A devout creationist talks to God while in church. That's fine. An avowedly atheist lawyer starts doing it in the middle of a meeting. They're probably delusional. If both of them suddenly start started saying the world is going to end in 30 minutes because of angry frogs living in the sun, they'd both be considered delusional. Unless that's mentioned in the Bible somewhere. I admit, I haven't read it in a while. Mm. Is that what it is? I don't know. That, well, that was saying, a waste of time. That yeah, was. No, yeah, it's taken from a, a book. Oh, was it? The article was adapted from... It's on the bottom. Oh, is it, is it on the book? Stop. Oh, oh this article was... The Idiot it? Brain. The Idiot Brain. Burn, it's debut book. Available. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. So, so what what he's blaming it on uh, is the, basically the brain. Yeah. But he's not actually answering the question. Why is it people who are religious get away with it? They yeah, get a free no, pass. No, no. Yeah, get a free pass. It's because in society they 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 create the rules. They create the people up top create the rules. You know, if I'm underneath to, your science is your religion. Because absolutely, of course. Even Brian Cox received a knight or a. Uh, 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 an MBE, CBE, CBE, or, or something whatever. like that, 
from a religious leader. From a, the, the Queen. The Queen. She's a religious leader. Leader. Yeah, yeah she's been. She was igno- inaugurated by the Church of England by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Canterbury. and he represents the Church God. Yes, yeah. he represents God. Yeah. So you could argue that Brian Cox is religious because he never gave his uh, CBE MBE back. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So it makes you think. Come on, but when you think about what, yeah, why is religi- on, religious belief is delusional? In it's our not, opinion. In yeah. our opinion. Come on. But what, what I was going to go from here and go on to the graduation ceremony. Well, come on. So we can go over here. So we've got, so we've got we took some photos. Now, this is, um, this is, we had the whole week. Last week. Last week of graduation ceremonies. Tuesday to Friday. Uh, with different, um, oh, what are they called? Students. Faculties, different yeah. faculties. On departments. Departments having their graduation, students graduating. Anyway. So you can see them all dressed up in their... In their Fancy dress. In their gowns. That's a bad image, isn't it? Oh, mm. that's better. Yeah, you know, they're, they're all wearing their gowns and their, their... I can't think what they're called, actually. They're, Tacky they're, hats. They're, yeah, and there's all, the, there's all of the family members. Because they the, now they hold... They hold the ceremony. Get it? In the cathedral. A religious place. So you're in university. Let's say you're studying astrology. Oh, right, yeah. Something science. Something science, okay. Physics. Yeah. And you end up getting your degree and you go to a religious building to receive your certificate. Hmm. Hmm. That, now, that doesn't make sense, really, yeah, does it? Because I'm sure physics people don't well, that, believe in God, do they? That sounds to me as if the as if science... Well, they shouldn't believe in God. Well, that sounds to me as if the science and religion are working hand in hand. Hand in hand. Or it could be that the religion and the science are both beliefs. Oh, well, yeah. And they're both in the same yeah. club. Yeah, of course. But well, you've got... Let, let's, let's, we need to draw a line between... Science that is relating to the natural world that is a belief. Oh, sure. And science that is tangible. And science that is like tangible. Why that the remote science control that, work that is that relates applied. to techn- that is applied right. in the form of technology. technology. Yeah, yeah. We should make that distinction because there's a lot of science that is useful. It uh, makes the it makes helps people to, blind. Makes people blind. Helps to make. Uh, uh, technology, but there's an awful lot of science that is just a waste of time. A waste of time, and it's conjecture. It's yeah. just a belief. Yeah. You know, anyway, fundamental you fundamental claims about nature yeah. and the natural world. Well, yeah. you anyway, know, but on. anyway, so we've got we've got that there. There are the people waiting to go in the ceremony. There's some more people there when they gown. They feel all important. They yeah. feel as if they've you know they've succeeded. They're going to be yeah. wealthy. They could, they've made it. They've made it. Yeah. You know, they've joined the club. Yeah. This is society's club. Your yeah. way of joining societal club, the mm. club of society, society yeah. to how you can be like them. Yeah. Because mm. everyone in top positions in society is likely to have got a degree, mm. been to university, of course, you know. There you go. That oh, lovely Come on, there. Move it, move lovely it there. So they're, they're there. And, they're, and then what they do, they have their awards, they get all their awards and they get their certificate in the cathedral. And then they all pile over to the nearest, to the leisure centre. For the registration, the paperwork, documentation. For, to do all stuff. the paperwork and to hand back the gowns, you know, cause some, of, some of them are on hire, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. blah. And, it, you know, again, you know, these people. Are literally uh, fucked up in the head. All of them. Are, all of them. Are. Look at that. You don't want to bend them. Oh right, yeah, it. sure, yeah. Took a bad one there. I mean, who, you know, you you want these people running your life? Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of them believe. <laughs> a lot of them believe. Yeah, they're delusional. They yeah. be- they believe the earth is spinning ball. ball. These mm-hmm. people, we've got to go back. Okay. These people end up working in your councils. Yeah, they become politicians. Yeah, you know. They've got universities all over the country. Yeah. You know. But anyway, come on. Top positions. But they're all fucked up. In our opinion. In our oh, opinion. Yeah. That all of these people who think they've done well in society, mm. we think they've, they're all fucked up. Mainly Be- because, because they may have learnt about law. They may have learnt about psychology. They may have learnt about sports science. They may have learnt about lots of other things. 
but they haven't learned about life. Absolutely, of course. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, all of these people, all graduates throughout the whole of the country, you know, don't learn life. Don't learn life. You go to a university and that, that, and that is the real world. Absolutely, yeah. This is the thing. When you go to a university, think about it logically. You're taught physics, maths, uh, uh, social sciences, law, law um, psychology, Poli- biology, um, politics, economics, whatever. You're taught a vast array of mm. subjects. They love it. But at the end of the day, none of the students are taught about life. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Life. Life, yeah. Getting older. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what happens and all to, that kind of stuff. Yeah, what happens to your body as you get older? What Absolutely. <clears throat> what's what's it like to age? Yeah, you know, you know, what's it like to be? How can you find happiness in your life? Yeah, what is it? What is life about? Yeah, you know, not one. How can I live well? How can how can people live well as opposed to living badly yeah. or unhappily? Yeah. How to avoid your unhappy marriages? Mm, absolutely. How to avoid family breakdown? Absolutely, yeah. You know yes. how to, you know these are the, these are the things that people should be taught. Anyway, come on, at university, so, absolutely uh, through yeah. education. Absolutely, don't you think so? You know these these. Oh, sorry, what you've overlooked one th- important thing. Go on, then. we've got to go back. All these people wearing the gowns on graduation day, they learn things about physics, economics, all this kind of stuff. But one thing they don't learn like you say, is about life. But most importantly, they don't learn about themselves and who they are as individuals. Ba-bam. All oh, right, yeah. There we go. And that is the most important thing. All these people are lost. Yeah. You know, they're lost individuals as well, far as I'm concerned. When you actually think about it, are they real people? They're not They're not real people, are they? Are they acting? Are they actors? Well, they're, they're, they're dressed up now in costume. Well, they're acting, aren't they? All acting apart. All, all acting apart. Come on. But they don't know who they are as individuals. Yeah. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Because no one's telling them. Because society reminds, isn't isn't teaching them reminds, who they are. Yeah, it reminds me of a super Not tramp. allowing them to know who they yeah, are. It reminds me of a super tramp song. Who I am. Oh, who I am. am. Who I am. Oh, dirty, dirty, dirty. Logical song. The logical they song, absolutely, of course. Do, 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 How do, do, to be logical, intelligent, intellectual. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Well, it off, but you're not we're, sort, we're spending too yeah, much sure, time. Yeah, sure, it, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Megastructures, ISS, gyroscopes. Megastructures. So that's that one where megastructures. There, there you go. What time do we need to be on this? Then, 38 Peter? minutes. 38 minutes. Here we go, 38. Is this where the bloke's doing his own little, um, oh, 38? Here we go, 38. Now, this is, a bit, I think this is a bit of a thought experiment. Not that you and me should be doing thought experiments. It's at 38. You've got 38 minutes here. Well, oh, okay, let's start it from th- there, th- there. Okay, well, should we play this then? Go on then. Put the right. sound on. Are you listening? Astronaut Rex Wolheim checks his spacesuit before his seven-hour spacewalk to fix the module onto the station's hull. We copy the expected messages and we're still just waiting on telemetry for Rex's suit. To prepare for this, Rex has undergone over 200 hours of intense training on... The, the, this is in relation to this bloke, you know, this actor, see, he's an actor, doing a seven-hour spacewalk. Yeah, which I think is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, one person, one single-handedly, person single-handedly, hand, single-handedly, on his own, out on his own. Yeah, does a seven-hour spacewalk just to fit, install a new module oh, onto yeah. the International yeah. Space Station. Yeah, which I'm, yeah. Anyway, twelve minutes, twelve, please, twelve, twelve. Oh right, I'm with you now. Twelve, twelve, eh? Twelve, twelve. Now listen to this. This is interesting. This is the thought experiment. Do we really need to go? Yeah, right, 12, okay. 12. 12, 12. Come on. The tilt of these spinning wheels, they exert a force on the space oh, station, back which it. makes it move. That's what I said. Control go. moment gyroscope, oh. steer the space. Oh, here you go. Let's watch it from this bloke here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got to, got to get it. Right, are we ready? Listen to this. This is good. Space scientist Kevin Fong demonstrates how a spinning wheel can move a space station. Now... 
you need to listen to this very carefully. All right, yeah, sure. We would very much like you to leave a comment below to see whether or not what he's saying would actually happen in a vacuum, a vacuum, vacuum environment, low pressure, low pressure, yeah. pressureless environment. When you're not actually attached to anything. Yeah, when you're not attached to anything. Thing. Remember, in other words, basically, you've got to spot the difference, hmm. really. This is a gyroscope. It's um, a very crude example of the sort of thing they have on space station. Now, like all gyroscopes, once it's up and spinning, it wants to stay where it is. And if you imagine that this plate here is the frictionless, weightless environment of space, if you can, and we get on top of it. If I turn the wheel, it steers me. And if I turn it back the other way and don't fall off, it turns me back again. And so basically what he's doing is trying to convince people that this is how they can steer or manoeuvre the International Space Station as it's in orbit, okay? Or any other. Or any other uh, vehicle. V space vehicle. They can use gyroscopes, and they've they, allegedly they've attached gyroscopes to the uh, International Space Station. Uh, we can, if we continue playing, okay. That is a very crude demonstration of how control moment gyroscopes steer the space station. Engineers fit the International Space Station with four gyroscopes. As engineers on the ground adjust the tilt of these spinning wheels, they exert a force on the space station which makes it move. Right, okay, so we've got we've basically got the gist of it, okay. So they've put gyroscopes on the space station which help it to move. They can mm. it can move like this, I suppose, you know, whatever, you yeah. know. Um sounds and great, doesn't it? And he's uh, Kevin Fong has demonstrated how that works. Absolutely, of course, yes. Now, I think it's this bollocks. Is absolute it's bollocks. bollocks, yeah. Yeah, we think it's bollocks. I don't think that these gyroscopes can work of that size, can rotate or move. The International Space, the International Space Station, well, well, an object as big as well, the well, International Space Station. They don't work. They can't work. They can't work. All that's going to happen, in my view, is that they're just going to rotate. Yeah, we, we think. We they won't think, apply yeah. force at all. They won't apply. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Now, the, you've got this is where you've got to spot the difference okay so imagine so let's go let's go let's go no, no, no. if you go back here's, to, here's the international space station you've got the gyroscopes if, attached to the international space station okay uh, okay and, and they're very small did they're you look small. at the size of them yeah they're very small now here's uh, what's his name kevin wong fong sorry kevin fong. kevin wong fong kevin fong fing fong ping fong kevin He's space kevin scientist fong. He's a space scientist. He spins his little thing. Right yeah, there. he's a physiologist. I don't know what he Did you see that? No, I didn't. Was he a phys physiologist? Yeah, he's a physiologist. Oh, okay. But they called him a space, didn't they? Space? space? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, so he stands on this little rotating wheel hmm. uh, holding this gyroscope. And you think, well, he's turning, but he's trying to convince people that it will work on the International Space yeah, Station. But you look at the... the There's the, a difference. But look at the size of the bicycle wheel, the gyroscope, to him. It's quite big, isn't it? But it's not just that. That's just that's just one little thing. And now, hold on, but you look at the size of these, these little gyroscopes, yeah, they're only small, to the size of the International Space Station. It will show you in a minute. Yeah, I know, yeah, sure. Yeah, look, they're, look they're at the tiny. size of them. They're tiny. Yeah. That, oh, that, that's look, number one. Look, they're not going to. They're not going to move. They're not going to the have an Im space impact on the international what's space station. That those, those gyroscopes will just spin. In my but, understanding. But you see, yeah, because the, it all boils down to the fact. The reason why he's well, we think the reason why he's turning is simply because he's fixed to the floor. 
well, there's that. With there's what that. He's he's turning. Yeah. 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 He's fixed. He's literally fixed. He's standing on the earth. So he's yeah. got greater resistance to the motion of the gyroscope spinning around, the wheel, bicycle yeah, but, wheel well, spinning around. There's resistance there. There's in, there's enough resistance to make him move. Yeah. Whereas if you look at the International the Space, Space Station, Station, it's not it's not attached to anything. Yeah. It's basically free to move in any direction it wants yeah. to. There's no resistance. There's there no at resistance at all. So how on earth can these gyroscopes actually move it? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the irony of this all is that nobody can actually demonstrate it up there. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Nobody can. Well, you would have thought he, he would be... Oh, right, yeah, because you nobody yeah. can demonstrate it. So, leave a comment below. What do you, what do you think would happen yeah. to the International Space Station with those gyroscopes? Yeah, do you attached? think it would actually move or do you think it would, wouldn't move? I, I don't think it would move... The only time it would possibly move... Oh, we're going on the assumption... Is if, yeah. is if you've got a very large gyroscope so, that's bigger than the International Space Station because it's all down to mass. Oh, right, yeah. The, it's uh, all relative. It, it's got to impart... The, ro the rotational force has got to be imparted on the other object or transferred to yeah, the and object. That, and that... That the mass of the object that's rotating the gyroscope has to be, be significant, significant enough to in impart to, in force and to make it move the other object. Sure, but you know, I mean, it's a good con conundrum, really. W would it move or would it not yeah. move? Now we're going on the assumption that the International Space Station is man-made and manned, but we, we don't think it yeah. is anyway. Yeah. But well, it's an an animation. But there we go. That's something for you. Leave a comment below. But uh, yeah, Clear I know that's off. that's quite interesting. Anyway, that is. Clear off. Um, Bye. So what's the next one? Hypergolic fuel. Oh, now you'll love this one. This is a great one. Yeah, we got into we got into a discussion with some uh, some deluded person. Yeah. Uh, on this video, the green flash making a safer hypergolic propellant. I mean, we don't need to watch oh, the video well. at the moment, but. We'll have to come. Can you demonstrate hypergolic fuels igniting in a vacuum, please? Mm. I'd very much like to see this demonstration. Can you show the video? No, yeah, let's show the video. Because these videos. Oh, let's switch that off. These videos are very much the same. And that is whenever you go on YouTube and you watch hypergolic fuels being demonstrated or played around with, they'll always do them in an atmosphere of air. Mm. Always do pressure. them in where there's pressure. Um, there you go, hypergolic uh, very reactive fuels. They they react just by mixing together, you know, and they react, but yeah. they're all done. Oh. And, oh, look, and then we've got the... Um, oh, the lunar, lunar, lunar lander, the capsule being jettisoned away. Yeah, they by, return home. By using hypergolic propellants. Yeah. You know, that's how they were released and that they used the hypergolic propellants to come back to yeah. go to dock with the command module. Yeah, but we think this is just bullshit. But we think it's bullshit because the thing is, is that not one person will actually show you um, hypergolic fuels um, being reacting in a vacuum condition. Mm. You, won't, you won't see it. Yeah. We've not seen it. All the videos on YouTube that we've seen are the more hypercolic fuels uh, reacting in air, reacting in in an atmosphere. Mm. Absolutely, of course. Which is which beats the uh, beats the thing really. I mean, there's one here. Here we go. Look, yeah, that, go. that's in, in air. That's in air. That's the same video. Yeah, in air, in atmosphere. Because in my understanding, in a vacuum, all that's going to happen is that they all just the 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 droplet. There you go, this is another one. That's the, in that's in there. The droplet will um be repelled, is it? Let's use just be it won't mix with the Are you other talking substance? in a vacuum. In a vacuum, yeah. It won't mix. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Because it can't combust. I I don't know. I, I don't know. You can't produce a flame. Yeah, you can't produce a flame in that's vacuum. That's what I think would happen. So we end up we end up um I mean there's not there's not there's also um there's also this one here. Yeah. Hydrazine reactions, hypergolic reactions. Here we go. We've got another one. It's only 29 yeah. seconds. Here we go. There we go. Woo. Another reaction. In air. In air 
of a hypergolic fuel, mm. you know? And, you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. What we'd like to see is a, a hypergolic fuel, right, reacting with an oxidizer mm. in a vacuum. Sure. You know, it's very yeah. simple. We're not asking for much. Yeah. Surely they would have tested it in the forties, fifties. Yeah. There must be video footage. Yeah. If you do a if you do a famous first, you'd want to evidence it, wouldn't yeah. you? Surely someone has done a video on YouTube. And we end up we end up we end up talking to this demented guy. Well you did. Or I did. Sixty two comments, you know. And all we're asking him is for a demonstration of hypergolic fuels reacting in, in vacuum, vacuum, yeah, vacuum conditions. Because he puts, he writes, the video has goddamned Apollo ascent in it that yeah. used a hypergolic rocket engine. Yeah. Either check out anything with AJ-10 engine that was filmed in space, Apollo service module, or the space shuttle maneuvering engines. What else do you want? Well, I want a real life in a vacuum chamber demonstration of these hypergolic fuels actually working. Surely you wouldn't send a rocket up into space if you hadn't. Uh, tested your hypergolic fuels yeah, to know, work yeah. in a vacuum environment yeah. on Earth. Yeah, because you feel the Apollo Ascent is fake. Yeah, I feel the Apollo Ascent is fake. So an independent demo would help clarify m my position. Surely there is a video of someone reacting hypergolic well, igniting fuels, these fuels. A, a fuel and an oxidizer yeah. in a vacuum in a lab or educational establishment. Absolutely, yeah. If they, if these hypergolic fuels and oxidizers can combust, where there is no pressure, then let's see where it's being demonstrated. Yeah. You know, we're only asking. You know, you're making a claim these hypergolic fuels can work in a vacuum. Well, let's let's see some let's see some proof. Yeah. You know, so anyway, you know, sixty odd replies. Six. Let's go to the end. We'll go just go to the end of these. Cause See, this is a, a, I, it's just an example of a deluded person who held who holds a fixed false belief. belief. The belief that hypergolic fuels and oxidizer will react in a vacuum. vacuum. Yeah, that's a fixed false belief. And they went to the moon. Man went to the moon. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, he talks about Donning Kruger, doesn't he? Of course. Yeah. So you know his last comment. He said they fired countless aerob sounding rockets with early AJ-10 engines. They tracked those with radar. If the engine didn't work in vacuum, then it would be visible by lack of acceleration. It's not my fault you can't understand that we have more tools than just our eyes. Now, kindly go away and stop wasting my time. But it's another example where he's accepting what is being presented with. Absolutely, of course. So, so I wrote to him, you know, keep up Einstein. You know, have you forgotten my initial post or forgotten the content of the above video? It's about hypergolic fuels, not high altitude missions. I always watch videos of hypergolic fuels being tested or demonstrated in atmospheric conditions, but never in vacuum conditions where they're supposed to work. Mm. So where's the test or demo video so I know they do work in vacuum conditions? So far, you've come up with Jack. You know, I think the reason why is because hypergolic fuels do not work in vacuum conditions, and it's a lie. They do. Mm. So what you think to be true is clearly untrue. Yeah. You actually think something that is untrue to be true. Well, Way to go, Einstein. Boy, it's a belief. It's a belief. belief. Absolutely, of course. So we got, uh, you know, and, and then that's it really, you know. Um, so I, I did, my final reply to him was, have you ever th sought medical help for your delusional disorder? You seem to think something that is untrue to be true. Mm. You hold a fixed false belief, which is characteristic of delusional disorder. All I want is for somebody to demonstrate in a laboratory setting that hypergolic fuels work in vacuum condition. If you can't help me in my request, just say so instead of fooling yourself. They do work in vacuum conditions. Yeah. You know... That's the thing, and it's part of all this. It's all part of this. A person with, with a delusion will hold firmly to the belief, regardless of evidence to the contrary. Mm. The or evidence lack of. Or lack of evidence. A person with a delusion will hold firmly. Now, I'm willing to change my views on anything mm. if I'm presented with new material, because I'd feel that I'd have to. Yeah. But material that would satisfy your um, in my my your, 
your competency, your um, sure, your legitimate right to understand the world. Absolutely, yeah, of course, yeah, and to understand or interpret a certain yeah. event, yeah. There you go. of course. But there you, you know, I so mean, let's have a look on um, Hall you know the effect. guy. <laughs> yeah, another mad mad person. Hall effect thrusters. Here we go. Yeah, I've forgotten who we were talking to, but he gave. Where are we going? Where are we? Oh, Hall there, effect of course. thrusters. We were on. Uh, somebody left a comment about the International Space Station. Thanks ever so much for for for, for that comment. I know, I'm, I'm sure we know who you are, but we can't remember your name. Well, you can just put it down below. Oh, we could put it down below. Just mention it. Um, but uh, um, he mentioned Hall effect thrusters, so we thought, oh, this is interesting. We'll actually co- cover these. So another another example where they're they're using uh, gyroscopes to help move uh, a space vehicle. But it's not fixed to anything. In space. And now they've got the idea of Hall effect thrusters that will move... Propel a vehicle... Propel a vehicle in, in space. space. In a vacuum condition. Conditions, yeah. An environment or a pressureless environment. environment yeah. Now, in spacecraft propulsion... Notice they've got spacecraft propulsion on this one. Is any method used to accelerate spacecraft and artificial satellites? But they haven't said in space. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, in spacecraft propulsion, a Hall effect thruster an is, a, T. is a type of ion thruster in which the propellant is accelerated by an electric field. Hall effect thrusters, based on the discovery by Edwin Hall, are sometimes referred to as Hall thrusters or Hall current thrusters. Hall effect thrusters use a magnetic field to limit the electron's axial motion and then use them to ionise propellant, efficiently accelerate the ions to produce thrust Mm. and neutralise the ions in the plume. A Hall effect thruster is classed as a moderate specific impulse space propulsion technology and has benefited from from considerable theoretical and experimental research since the 1960s. Mm, Sounds very futuristic, doesn't it? All thrusters operate on a variety of propellants, the most common being xenon and krypton. Oh, noble gases. Absolutely, yes. Other propellants of interest include argon, bismuth, iodine, magnesium, zinc, and adamantine. 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 Hall thrusters are able to accelerate their exhaust to speeds between 10 and 80 kilometres per second, with most models operating between 15 and 30 kilometres per second. The thrust produced depends on the power level. Devices operating at 1.35 kilowatt produce about 83 newton metres of thrust. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, come on, uh... yeah, we don't need to uh, go on the whole lot. But, uh, so they just ironise the propellants. That's all they do. Yeah, but basically, yeah. And yeah, basically, it's a bit like a, it's a bit like an electrical spark coming out, coming out of your your thruster. Oh, it's a, it's it? a bit like the reverse of a what you know those tubes that they use to uh, light a gas. Oh, oh I, I think I know what you mean. Like a grill. No, it's the the tubes. tubes. They call them a certain name. A tube. So the the gas will glow red or blue or oh those um the diffu- oh thingy tubes um oh uh, yeah they're thingy tubes aren't they D- yeah like diffusion tubes or something like that but they they're the kind of reverse of that because you've got the the ions from the the anode passing through traveling through the tube which then interact with the ion which interact oh of with course the gas yeah. To then light, yeah, they're, they're they're exactly the same as a Crookes tube, apart from there's gas no gas diffusion tube. Yeah, yeah. gas diffusion. Yeah, I'm sure it was gas, or was it a gas ionizer, ionizing tube or something? Oh, anyway, yeah. they're yeah, they're a bit they're very similar to a Crookes tube. Okay, where you've got your your cathode emitting your yeah. ions in the gas, and you have the ring with a hole in it, and they pass through, but you don't have the you don't have the vacuum, and you don't have the glass. Yeah, and Th- the, that's the, and the, the the cathode is connected to a, a space high voltage. Yeah, that can high voltage that source. can then move. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, of course. Yeah, now so you've got a few there. Let's go down. There's a lovely little picture here. Principle of operation: the essential working principle of the Hall thruster is that it uses electrostatic potential to accelerate ions up to high speeds. 
So you've got, uh, let's have a look at this diagram here very quickly. So you've got your anode, your gas distributor there, mm. and on this side as well. So you've got two of them. It's a, probably a ring. Yeah. I would imagine that's a ring. And you've got your inner magnetic coil. Mm. Okay. And you've got your cathode neutralizer. So you've got your cathodes on, on the outside here and your anode on the your anodes are, are on here and your cathodes on there. Yeah. Basically. And boron nitride walls of mm. that. Okay. So that's Fast the great. exhaust. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah, I, I think I understood that one. Uh blah blah blah. Yeah. Well we don't blah, really blah, need blah. to understand yeah, we don't fully need to, how they work. Yeah, we what don't need lights? to know that. There well, is a there is a photo here. Oh, here we, we go. go. Uh, yeah. This is this is the only thing that's good on this yeah. page. Now look, this is uh, an extra exo trail. You just uh, oh, did did you want the? Uh, oh, wait there. Just, sorry, just go back. Oh, just go back. How do I go? Oh, there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is an exo trail XOMG Nano sixty watt Hall effect thruster firing in a vacuum, vacuum chamber. chamber. Dum dum dum. So. What's interesting is that you can, see, you can actually see the ions firing, can't you? You can there actually you see the, the ions firing. But the thing is, is that where's the motion? Yeah, the, the, this is the thing. You see, this is what was, this is another point which is very similar to the hypergolic fuels. And it's, it's okay showing this being used in vacuum conditions, but what they're not showing you is that it's actually propelling something in a vacuum. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's the most important well, thing. thing. Well, you know, that would be crucial, wouldn't it? Really, absolutely, of course. To, you know, you'd want to know that if you were going to put a spaceship <laughs> up there, it would move. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, when you when you look at the image, when you look at the image, it's clear they've got the vacuum chamber. Yeah, to do it in, right. and yet all they need to do is to put that um, Hall effect uh, thruster you just actually on on a on a rail. Yeah. That can slide yeah. and just switch it on. Yeah. And then woo, they can make a video of that. Yeah. Couldn't they? Wouldn't that be exciting? Absolutely. They could put the, the camera could be on the outside, looking through the uh, window well, there. They could have a camera inside. Could have a camera inside, you know. And yet the nearest they get to this is just the, it's sitting there on top of a, a In metal a cabinet. A metal cabinet. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know, and they've got it on. Switch it on, and they've said, Well, there you go. Because we know that you can't produce a flame in a vacuum but what they can produce is plasma mm. because we can see here argue with that a flame is plasma no yeah a flame is different mm. a flame is different to the electrical the flame discharge is natural yeah but this is electrical discharge mm. it's not a flame is it different yeah a flame is not electrical mm. discharge but anyway but um, because if a flame was electrical discharge it would work in a vacuum you'd get be able to get a flame to exist yeah. in a vacuum, but it's it's so it's okay that it works. It can glow in vacuum, but can it actually move something yeah. in vacuum? This is the big question. Yeah, we, we don't, don't think, think so. it. We don't think it will no. because it needs something to resist the flow of ions, of ions, mm. or electrons, or yeah. whatever you want to call it. The th the voltage. Yeah. Well, you're up against the same problem, and that is you need the resistance. You and need the resistance. In a vacuum, there's nothing to resist. Absolutely, of course. It's not going to work. No. It's not. Your space vehicle is not going to go anywhere. Of course. So that's it, really, isn't it? Yeah, we but, just I mean, need to... And then we... Yeah, we just need to do our fennel failing. Oh, fennel failing. Oh, yeah, this is a good one, yeah. Let's go on uh, this one. Fennel failing. Um, oh, wait there. Fennel can you Can you think failing. of the, the video it was? No, just to uh, fennel failing. I've got to spell it. P H. O L P A P H E N E N O L Fennel yeah. Oh yeah. Fennel Failing Indicator. There you go. Which is the video we watched that bloke would do? It would probably yeah. be um because uh, his was a good one, his his one. Oh he just put just put blowing through um breath, I don't know. Um exhale breath. Exhale breath. Yeah, let's do that. Exhale, but he might come up. Uh, there oh, there he is. is. There he is. Now, you'll like this. Let's have a little listen to this. Just acid finish breath. Off. There you go. Not acid rain. Yeah. Not acid breath. Let's just finish. Acid breath. Here we go. Let's just play. We might as well play Copyright this. Copyright Mark Rosengarten. Don't worry. We'll... Uh... Good morning.
morning, everybody! Welcome back to my chemistry classroom. Today, I'm going to demonstrate that I have acid breath. You want to know something? You do, too! How do you know? Let's find out. I'm going to take this distilled water, put some of it into this flask right here like that. Let's just open this up and pour this in like that. Isn't that delightful? Now, neutral water, which is what water is, contains an equal concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions to the tune of 10 to the negative 7th molar each. Now, pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. And since the concentration is 10 to the negative 7th molar, the negative log of that is 7, which is why the pH of water is 7. It's not some magical number that somebody just pulled out of thin air. Into this neutral pH water, I shall place some phenolphthalein, an absolutely marvelous acid-base indicator, which just so happens to change color at a pH of about 8, from colorless to pink. Here we go. Oh yeah, indeed, look at that. It's totally and completely colorless. Forgive my eyes for doing the wigging back and forth thing. I'm looking at myself on the screen here and at you here. Well, I'm not actually looking at you, I'm looking at the lens of the camera, but I'm distracted by the fact that my face is like right over here. So if you see my eyes kind of wig back and forth, that's why. Now to this neutral water, we're going to add some sodium hydroxide. Watch what happens. Isn't that pretty? Nice pink color for the phenolphthalein. And now, as promised, I'm going to prove to you that I have acid breath. Here's how. I'm going to take this straw, it's actually a piece of glass tubing, and I'm going to blow through this straw into this phenolphthalein, like so. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. neutralize the base how well see my breath contains carbon dioxide no that that's wrong all he's demonstrated in the video is that he's got acid in his breath mm, absolutely yeah. he's not demonstrated he's got co2 Two. that mm. has caused the phenyl failing to turn so, clear clear yeah yeah yeah, let's just get up, let's, for those who haven't, uh, aren't aware of it, let's get up that information about XL breath condensate. Oh, that's on... It's in his bookmark. It's on the bookmark. Wait there, let's have a little look. XL breath condensate. There it is. So it is there. Here we go. XL breath, breath condensate. condensate. Wait just there. Source of EBC. Dilution. Um, have I gone too too far gone? Just uh, I'll just edit find, edit find, find on page. On. What am I looking for? Oh, formic. You haven't spelled it properly. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's because I put the S there. There we go. There you go. Now these are things that are in your exhaled breath condensate. In other words, your body produces acid, and the acid is within your condensate that you exhale yeah well like i say he's only proving that you're demonstrating that you have an acid breath mm. when you exhale so volatiles such as acetic acid formic acid and ammonia are found in much higher concentrations in exhaled breath condensate, condensate. the non-volatile constituents and tend therefore to be much easier to measure so if you go back on the video of the acid breath so in our view, what's happening is that the acids in his that his body is producing, the formic acid, the acetic acid, and maybe other other acids, acids that yeah. are, that, are, that could well be there, is changing the penal phenylphthalein, the phenylphthalein, pink to colourless. Yeah, so clear. So let's just go back to this. Let's listen again. Look. I neutralize the base. How? Well, see, my breath contains carbon dioxide, and, well, so does yours. And when carbon dioxide mixes with water, some of it combines to form carbonic acid, which lowers the pH. Now, originally, the pH was above 8. How do I know? Because the phenol failing was pink. The pH is now below 8. How do I know? <laughs> well, because it's not pink anymore. So the addition of carbon dioxide to an aqueous solution results in carbonic acid and this is exactly how acid rain gets formed now yeah we think that's total bollocks he's yeah. got nothing 
he's got nothing to substantiate that claim, that, that claim or his view, yeah. that fixed false belief. Because mm. that all, that's all it is. It's just a belief. Yeah, we've got information here on on the uh, on the XL Beth condensate that distinctly categorically shows that your XL Beth contains other acids, and all the phenylphthalein does is an it just demonstrates that you have acid breath. Mm. He's saying that it's because you've got CO2, but that's, I mean, come up. There's no combustion. There, where's the combustion? There's no carbon in the body. Absolutely. How how can the human body produce mm. carbon dioxide, a carbon-based gas? Yeah. It can't do. The phenyl failing is likely to be changing colour simply because of the acids that are, that are like acetic acid, formic acid, and others that are present in your exhaled breath, not because of CO2, because yeah. of cellular respiration. Right. Okay? Yeah. You know? So, you know, there we so are. this guy here, yeah, you know, pff, you know. He's talking a load of shit. He's talking a load of bollocks. Yeah. But he's, fixed, he's, he's another person with delusions. He's got delusions, you know. Yeah. But, but, but there, there you go. We go. Oh well, sorry, oh, well. Mark. Sorry yeah. to burst your bubble, oh, mate. Yeah. There we go. That was so, easy. So wasn't it? that was that was it. Yeah, of course. So mm-hmm. uh, so there we, that well, that was easy, wasn't it? Of course. Yeah, Did go. it in one take as well. Didn't have to go over it and over it at all or whatever. Yeah. Wasn't that lovely? So thanks ever so much. And always remember to let your time if something doesn't make sense, like thinking that there's CO two in your <sighs> exhaled breath. Oh, there's carbon. Or there's carbon, carbon dioxide, of course. Or even thinking that um, the International Space Station is manned, is man-made, and um, can actually move. Move with this. Move like this, you know. Yeah. In its position, as as it's orbiting, it can move laterally, sideways, and all these different... With the help of just these small, very tiny... Gyroscopes. Gyroscopes. I mean, it's like, it's like me. If I held a gyroscope here, a small gyroscope in my hand, do you think it would move me? Sure. Do you know that? You, no, did it you know? Would it? Did it you wouldn't. notice when that uh, was? What was that? What was that? Uh, that that. Oh, what was that physiologist's guy uh, name? Mister Wong. Fong. 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 F O N G. Yeah. Did you notice that when he spun his bicycle wheel on the thing, it was actually literally. Forcing him to to yeah. actually turn even whilst he was standing. Yeah, but you've got but look at the size of it. The, it was very big, wasn't it's it? It's large. It was using a bicycle. Whereas, wheel. whereas if he used a small one, if he used a tiny one, it, it it just might move his hand. It wouldn't move his hand because he can resist. Oh right, yeah, of course. The motion of the gyroscope. Oh right, yeah, because if yeah, if it was fixed, it wouldn't move the hand. Yeah. Oh sure, yeah. You've got in other words, it's all about proportion. Yeah. Proportionality. In other words, it's another example where Kevin Fong is fooling people. Oh, but he could have actually, res- if he'd have stayed firm on the ground, he could have resisted the motion of that. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, he possibly. could have resisted. Could have. I wonder yeah. what that would be like. That, that might be quite. Uh, quite but, but again, it's all it's all relative. That so you've got to have sub- su- a substantial gyroscope in order to impart a force. On that is that is going to be significant to enough to to move an object. Yes, yeah, basically. of course. Yeah, you've always got to think that way. But uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, let us know what you think on that one. But uh, or if you think that there's oxygen in as a constituent of the air, as, along with your nitrogen. Mm. If you think your CO two detector can 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 can't detect nitrogen. <laughs> Oh, right, Especially yeah. the nitrogen that's in the air. Especially when it's been uh, calibrated with nitrogen. So you buy your you buy your CO two detector and you want to calibrate it in the air, and you know you've been told there's point zero four percent carbon dioxide in the air, and yet you they at the factory they calibrate it with nitrogen, so it should be seventy eight percent. You yeah. should be calibrating it because there's seventy eight percent nitrogen in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah do you, you know, yeah. yeah. Or if you think mm. plants in their natural habitat absorb CO two and release oxygen, mm. or fish breathing dissolved oxygen. oxygen in the water. Yeah, yeah if you think, uh, if you think, yeah, gas spinning ball, cobalt, 
and nickel. nickel don't contain iron. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, of course, yeah. Or if you th- if you to think make the, that, that doesn't make them ferromagnetic. Absolutely. If you've got a fixed false belief. belief. Yes. Absolutely, of course. You know, it's it's all absolutely madness, isn't it? It's all yeah. rubbish. So thanks ever so much, and we'll see, see you next, next time. time. Okay. Bye. ta The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.